Since many of you have requested to see behind the scenes work on Persona Project, I'm gonna start sharing my first concepts of characters before their errors come out. Because character design is my passion! Of course, what I'm gonna be showing you today will not be the final designs, but literally just the first drafts just to get an idea out, and we'll see how much they change before the actual era comes around. We're gonna start with Blackbird's era, considering that's gonna be the next era after Wild Child's. Blackbird's gonna pick up our story when year 9 rolls around. And when we change to the next era, all of the designs and names of the characters will also change. Not just me, but everyone in my life. So let's design my little brother first. My little brother was just starting elementary school when I was starting Blackbird's era. He went through a major warrior cats and anime boy phase. <laughs> so... Yeah. He literally turned his whole classroom into like a warrior cat's clan. And his username used to have to do with the night sky, so I decided to include like a little moon and a little star on his t-shirt to kind of resemble the usernames, because that's what me and my brother are using to base our era's names off of, or at least their themes off of, were our old usernames. But I'm trying to keep the hairstyle consistent for most of these characters, so that way you can at least tell who they are, at least by some features that are consistent throughout all the eras. His hair used to be really long during this stage in life, so he's got like a little ponytail going on. But I asked him what bird he would like to be, since Blackbird's era is going to be all bird themed. And my brother chose a blue jay. And I couldn't agree more. It really does suit him. He was definitely into the color blue at that point. I also decided to give him gloves and kind of like a combat-ish outfit because Blackbird is known as the hero. She calls herself the hero. And so I wanted to kind of give the kids like these kind of superhero-esque outfits because in their mind they are role-playing as superheroes and they think that they are like unstoppable super-powered beings. As for the cheeks, I just decided to do like a cute little like cheek pattern because my brother when he first started drawing his very first OC had like these really cute little purple cheeks so I had to keep it on him to kind of resemble his first character. And this is going to be my brother, no longer Rocky but now Blue Jay in Blackbird's era. Ah uh, yes, I always forget that I have to like actually draw these people even though I don't like them. So here, we're gonna be doing my mother, who I don't necessarily like to call mother. I like to call her my birther because it's about all she did. So the birther is going to get a design based off of the mockingbird because Blackbird is actually a mockingbird or based off of a mockingbird because that is the Florida state bird. So I grew up hearing them a lot and they feel very nostalgic for me. And I also kind of look more like my birther than I do my father. So I figured my father will be the blue jay and the other parent would be a mockingbird. Another thing I'm gonna try and keep it consistent is like colors being similar. Like example, she's always gonna be wearing like purple because that's been her favorite color pretty consistently throughout like my, my entire life. Whereas like my little brother was a kid was like going through a lot of different color phases. So his colors are gonna change like a lot versus like somebody like an adult whose preferences and things don't necessarily change that much. She definitely starts to get into like this kind of weird like gothic rockaholic as she called it, phase where she would only wear like leather jackets and ripped jeans and boots and was honestly kind of acting like a weird little teenager sometimes. So I decided to give her that vest and like ripped jeans. I toned down the wings. I was gonna make them blue, like her eyes, cause that the blue would tie everything together. But honestly, the red wings, like a reddish tone, worked a lot better and tied in more of like the other color, like the warmer colors in, and I really honestly like it more. And for her t-shirt, this is like a very specific thing. It's not a heart because she has a heart. But <laughs> trust me, it's not because she has a heart. It's actually because at this point in time, she ended up getting engaged to my stepfather. And when my stepfather engaged to her, he gave her this absolutely gorgeous like chocolate, red diamond ring that was in the shape of a heart and then she also got a matching necklace that went along with it and so i wanted to incorporate the heart in some kind of way without having to draw like a heart around a necklace like every single time she appeared i figured it'd be a lot easier just to do a t-shirt pattern that i could literally make into a, like a stamp brush and just plop it on there real quick that way you know my stepfather jim's his little heart still remains with her 
and I think that's really important. Kept her hair up, she always has had her hair up, and I try to keep the bangs very similar. Again, this hairstyle is similar, so you can kind of tell who it is. Eye colors will always stay the same as well, and this is how she turned out. You know? It- I, I, I don't hate it. I, I just- I hate her. <laughs> Let's design my father. Obviously I had to keep the Blue Jay theme because my brother is like literally a spitting image of my father. It's crazy. They look so similar. And then there's just me who looks absolutely nothing like anybody in my family, which, you know, I'm like kind of hoping and praying means I'm not actually related to them, but I'm at least related to my brother. We are so similar, it's painful. But anyways, I decided to tone down his Blue Jay tones to be more of like a muted, more dull color. Unfortunately, my dad is gonna kind of go through like a decline in this era and he certainly loses a lot of his light and his spark and so I'm trying to kind of signify that by doling down the colors a lot. He's also just a little bit older than my birther so he appears older, shows a lot more in him. He's also like extremely stressed out so he grayed a lot faster. <laughs> my dad of course, like Wild Child said, is always wearing a hat and sunglasses so he's always going to be wearing that. He was still running his electrician business so he had a t-shirt for that because that's actually the design that was on his t-shirt it was yellow but then he got like a rebrand thing and then it turned blue so it honestly works really well with the color palette i have picked out for him for this era and i'm very happy with how he turned out oh uh, heck yeah it's jim's turn oh i love you jim this is my stepdad which uh i guess spoilers for persona project even though it's my life i feel weird about saying that my life is like a spoiler warning but yeah, I mean, it should be pretty obvious at this point that my parents get divorced at some point because dear lord have mercy. But yeah, my stepdad is so freaking rad and you're gonna see just how much he influenced me and changed my life for the better. He was this big bodybuilding Italian dude with cystic fibrosis and my god was he a fighter. He was so cool, he was so into wrestling. He really loved staying fit and eating healthy, and he instilled so many good habits into me. But he was originally from Chicago, so I had to. His football t-shirt, because he was super into football. He even got me a t-shirt at one point, and I was like, ew, I hate sports, but like, I ended up loving the t-shirt later on. I decided to give it to him and put his favorite number on there, number three. It's very interesting, both of my fathers in my life have had the favorite number three, and I think that's like a weird amazing symbolism, honestly. And you'll probably figure out why later on when I tell my story, but the number three comes up quite a bit. It's very interesting. But he was always dressed so nice. He always had nice dress pants and he always smelled really good. Such a fancy guy, honestly. But for this, I decided to make him a cardinal, not only because it reminds me of his favorite sports teams. And I decided to give him one wing because he was disabled and he did fight very hard just to live. He had to go through dialysis like twice a week just to filter his blood because he had a severe disorder that literally would impact every aspect of his life. But that literally didn't stop him from being such an amazing person. Last minute, I added on a watch to him because he always did have like those bougie, fancy like Rolex watches because he was like super rich and super like about those brands and stuff. I also gave him a watch because he had a very limited time with me. And while that might be a very sad detail, I just kind of wanted to include it in the design that I want him to be kind of checking his watch in the background every now and then and know that our time is very limited because he certainly knew but I didn't necessarily understand and I think that this is a really solid design. This is the one I'm the most happy with out of everybody in this whole era. Like this is just him 100% and even though this is the only era he will appear in, I'm so grateful to even have that at all. Ah, now I get to explain the other aspect of the divorce that was so fun. Oh boy, it's everyone's favorite villain. Give it up for my dad's crazy girlfriend. Woohoo! Oh, I feel like everybody's had this experience if you've had divorced parents. Somebody gets with somebody absolutely cuckoo bananas and then we all get traumatized. Okay, honestly though, aside from like the actual horrors that I had to witness with this woman, making her design was so fun because she was that exact like trashy, horrible white woman who lived in the middle of Florida and act like a complete fool. Like she was that low of a human being, man. And it was so fun to draw. Like, 
I'm sorry if that sounds bad, but like it was fun to make this like super messy character. She had unkept, horrible, knotted, curly ginger hair, and she like tried dyeing part of it and failed. It was so horrifying. She would only wear a bathing suit around. Like she refused to wear like normal clothes. And it was super weird and annoying. So I tried to the, to keep that kind of true, but then I got uncomfortable. So I just kind of made it into like a tank top, crop top thing because like, bro, I don't want to look at that any more than I have to think about it in my own memories like it's freaking mortifying it's disgusting <laughs> but i did keep like her little like cover-up like bottom little like skirt thing she has it was like this little like floral patterned classic florida bathing suit cover thing and last minute i decided to add like this little swirl on her cheeks to kind of tie more pink into the design because i was like man that pink's sticking out like a sore thumb and i kind of want her eyes to be the thing you go towards i'm not trying to play into the stigma by saying that because she was bipolar that she was crazy there are bipolar people who handle it very well and get treatment and can live very normally. However, this woman decided to mix her bipolar medications with alcohol and other various drugs and decided to be an absolute freaking unhinged maniac. So, unfortunately, because of her untreated mental illness, I had to suffer some great repercussions. And I don't necessarily like calling her crazy because I know that she was just unwell and just needed help now. But as a kid, that's like all I had a frame of reference for because my family, did not understand mental health and did not care if they were hurting anybody's feelings with their harmful stigmas. So just so you know, I'm not saying that all bipolar people are insane. I'm just saying that this one person I had an experience with was insane and they just happened to be bipolar. But that's gonna be candy. Oh boy, I almost put a little candy in her hair. Like a little like hairpin or something, but it honestly just kind of took away from the whole Florida trash vibe. So this is what we ended up with. So for my grandparents, I mostly stuck to their original designs because honestly, they were pretty iconic and they were pretty spot on. But I obviously had to alter them to be birds. So for my nanny and papa, my nanny, I decided to also do the muted blue jay colors because she's older, she's gray. But I also gave her the same cheeks that Evan has because I kind of want to show that like Evan and my dad's side of the family, they all look very similar. Like I don't understand what it was about my brother just ended up looking like everybody on that side of the family, but he did. And so I wanted to make sure that I included some traits that showed that they were all looking very similar. And I just toned down her colors. She used to be a lot more pink and now I went to a more blue just to kind of go with her other colors and her new palette. Nothing fancy there. I did give her one little hair out of place because haha yeah she did kind of start to like lose it a little bit in this era so You'll see what that's all about pretty soon. For my papa, this was actually like a really hard design because I freaking loved him as a frog and having to turn him into like a person with wings, I was like, freaking cow a bummer, dude, this sucks. He looks so normal now. He's not like a cool frog guy anymore. He's just some guy now. Man, I feel like I kind of took the character out of him. So with this design, I don't know if I want to keep it so close to the other one, but like, Oh, he's just like the epitome of old white man. They never change. They wear the same exact outfit and they always look the same in every single picture. So it's just like, I probably should keep him that way because that's literally how he was my entire life. He looked literally identical the entire time. But it's like, I almost want to do something different just to like spice it up a little bit. But no, at the end of the day, he's just generic white grandpa. What can I say? And then on my mother's side, we have my Mimi, who I also gave the Mockingbird wings. And I kept more of the red for her as well, just because I see her as a very angry person because, yeah, she was a very angry person. Like, woman was mad over everything and, like, I totally get it. <laughs> but I kept her design, like, pretty much identical too. She never changed. Like, there's some people in my life that just, like, never changed. They did the same things. They wore the same clothes. They had the same hair. I did want to keep her cute little pink cheeks, kind of like what my birther had. But for my pop-up, I went with a completely different bird because technically he's not blood related to my birther or me. I went with a adorable little woodpecker. I'm picking birds that are native to Florida, or at least ones that I remember from my childhood that are very nostalgic. And I remember how much wonder I got looking at the beautiful woodpeckers in the forest. Also, I just thought it was like kind of close to his frog design where he was a tomato frog. So now he has this really cool like little red head kind of like the woodpecker and little tufts of hair that kind Kind of look like feathers and he's got these cool striped feathers now kind of wrapped all around him and i don't know i just really liked how it turned out 
And I think that he was the best at all the grandparents who got a new design in Black Bear's era. We're now going into brand new territory here with a bunch of different characters and friends and teachers and things you have never met before. Oh man, this one's gonna be a can of worms to open. Oh boy. Well, here we go. This is gonna be Bluebird. Bluebird was my best friend in middle school. Bluebird was the epitome of hey, there's that weird girl nobody likes, and I was like, hey, I'm a weird girl that nobody likes, and then we became best friends. She was such a courageous person. She was such a bold and happy and just authentic person when I met her. She was like obsessed with peace signs. She had big hippie pants. She would wear like these big flowy pants, and she was just the coolest to me, dude. Like, Blackbird's looking at her being like, whoa, she has like part of her hair dyed. That's so cool. Like my parents would never let me do that. So it's just like such a wholesome little like middle school friendship thing. And like we grew up together. We did everything together. We literally became inseparable. Like I still to this day believe that this person is my soulmate. Ugh, it's such an incredible feeling to like finally draw her into the series because of how goddamn important she is to me. It just feels like, I don't know, I just forgot how much of my life she wasn't a part of while I'm making Wild Child's era. I'm like, wow, life before Bluebird, what was that like? That's, I can't even imagine it now. Like, it's, it's so surreal. So to keep to the Bluebird design, I gave her these bright, bright, bright blue wings right off of the exact photo reference. And then of course I decided to give her shirt an orange color to kind of match the bluebird as well but honestly that worked out perfectly because her favorite color at that time was orange so it worked out so freaking well and i just was so happy that i had found a bird that i remembered from my childhood that perfectly matched her this is going to be bluebird appearing in blackbird's era very soon this is my other best childhood friend who you will know in wild child's era as jill the ferret-loving best friend of Wild Child, is now the ferret-loving best friend of Blackbird, but is now known as Goldie. I'm actually very excited because most of these designs in this era are like very close to what the real people kind of looked like in comparison to like being like woodland creatures like Wild Child's era. It was like really fun. I got to draw all of her adorable little freckles and like her freaking bangs with the long haircut, which is like every freaking AFAB person in that time had this exact same like haircut with the bangs cut right across your forehead, dear God. But she kind of rocked it and it gave her like a little doinker, like a little swirly little hair out of place because me and her were freaking crazy together. We were freaking nuts, dude. We were so hyper, so unmasked or divergent kids. It was so awesome. Yellow just really suits her. She's just such a happy person. I don't think I've ever seen her sad genuinely in like my whole life. She was just such a beam of sunshine. I also decided to give her like a t-shirt design. It was kind of tough because I wanted to do like a little ferret face, but it ended up looking like a superhero mask, so I went ahead and did a Pokeball design. We are huge Pokemon nerds, so that works out really well. And that's gonna be Goldie. She won't appear too terribly much in Blackbird's era because we're gonna go to different schools halfway through the era, but in the first part she's gonna be very important. This is a character that you'll see in the background of Wild Child's era. He's this little bumblebee character named Buzz. He's basically going to be one of my best daycare friends. He is gonna be a really important character to Blackbird. I won't spoil my life. <laughs> but originally he was Buzz and now in this era he's gonna be known as Finch. I went with this kind of striped red color coding for him because we both got like super into Pokemon and anime and role playing and all that fun stuff. And one of my most fond memories with Finch was when we were in daycare and we were playing this horrible like PC game on like Cool Maths games or something like that. Something adjacent to that. Honestly, it was kind of like a terrifying game. It was like a flashing lights game, which literally could have been really harmful to anybody around us. I mean, luckily nobody got hurt, but like what was wrong with the 2000s exactly? But anyways, um, we were like playing that game until our freaking eyes were watering and laughing so hard. So all I can think about is how red the screen was getting and stuff. Plus when he blushed, he like turned entirely red and it was so cute. He was this soft, sweet, autistic boy and he really made me feel seen. This, this is Finch. I'm so happy to have had him in my story and I can't wait to show you all of our adventures together.
Along with the dynamic duo of Blackbird and Finch, we have Dove, who is the final piece of our daycare trio of chaos. <laughs> Poor little Dove. She was the sweetest, shyest girl. Oh my goodness. She was like closer friends with Finch than I was at first, but then I came, you know, wild childing my way in and weaseling my way into everybody's hearts. And I kind of took over as group leader. Which I feel like she appreciated, but I always saw her as like this very peaceful, stoic kind of character in my life. Very calm and very logical, and I could only thing I could think of was comparing it to was like a dove. With the color palette and everything, just it worked out so well. She had this really, really long straight hair, and I used to love brushing her hair and braiding her hair. And we just have such a good time on the playground playing Pokemon and running around writing stupid stories together. I can't wait to introduce all of my daycare trio to you guys in this era. Look at how cute she is. Oh, I literally love her design. It's freaking perfect. Let's design some teachers. It's gonna be Miss Palm, based off of a palm warbler. She is my fourth grade teacher. She was like this really angry, like super strict teacher I had. I don't know why. I feel like this woman literally never had fun. So I thought I'd be like super ironic to give her like this really bright yellow shirt to kind of match the bird. But honestly, her hair already kind of matched the bird's red too. So I was like, okay, well, it matches the bird's design, but it doesn't match her personality. I think it's actually really funny that she has this kind of contradicting like light color palette against the dark. Like, I don't know. I feel like the design really pulled her all together. Gave her some little swirls on her cheeks just because I thought it would be cute. I gave a lot of characters kind of cheek like features, like little like spots or little swirls or something, just because I feel like that's a bird feature for whatever reason. Like, I don't know what makes something a bird feature or not. I just, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. Nevertheless, this is going to be Miss Palm and she's going to be uh, one heck of a teacher I had. Oh, I am so excited to introduce you to Mr. Crow though. Mr. Crow was my fifth grade teacher and he changed my life in ways that I cannot even begin to explain, but I'm gonna have to figure out a way because I'm telling my life story and animating it in 4K, so I guess I'll be figuring that out really soon. Blackbird was so lucky to have had this teacher. He had been a teacher for like 30 years, and we were his very last class before he was gonna retire. He was an outstanding human being. Like, just everything I want to be in life. He was a freaking author! Like, he wrote books and we read them in class. But he had, like, been teaching for so long that he literally barely had a voice left. So he literally had a microphone and an amplifier. He'd walk around and kind of, like, talk as best as he could into the microphone. Which, it was a little hard to understand him sometimes, but oh my god, the wisdom that he had, like, you better believe everybody in that class is paying attention. Like all ears on this guy. <laughs> Can't wait to tell you about all the amazing like interactive games he made and all the really honestly important life lessons he passed down. Like I just have so many fond memories with this teacher and making him a crow was just a no-brainer to me because I just associate crows with so much wisdom. I feel like crows are just amazing underrated creatures and he was an amazing underrated person. I can't wait to introduce him. I love him so much. Oh my goodness gracious. Last character for Blackbird's era that I decided to give a first draft to is this little red bird. Another cardinal character because I kind of wanted to have a couple more than like one of each bird in the main cast and crew here. I was like, well, let's do another cardinal, shall we? This was my first quote unquote crush. Okay, this was not a crush in my opinion because it was like a thing where the entire school was like pinning us on each other and we were not interested whatsoever because <laughs> I'm a lesbian. Yeah, it was really awkward. So this was like the first quote unquote crush I ever had. It was made for me and I just kind of played along for some reason. I mean, it's mostly because Blackbird just wanted to fit in and wanted to be popular and wanted everybody to like her. So she did whatever they would ask and like fall into every rumor they ever made about her. Oh my god, help her. Blackbird would constantly be asked about, Oh, do you know what Redbird's doing? Oh, are you trading silly bands with Redbird? He was not special. He was just a generic white boy with brown hair and blue eyes and wore gym shorts. That's literally, like, he had zero personality. I can't even tell you, like, what his interests were or if he did anything interesting at all. Like, this was just a boy TM. The school was just like, oh yeah, they're in love. 
and I just kind of fell for it. I don't know why. I don't know why, but that's him, I guess. God, middle school's so embarrassing. I, I'm so regretting having to post my entire thing online. You guys better freaking be nice to me, because this is so embarrassing. While there'll be many other characters in Blackbird's era, these are going to be the most consistent characters that are going to reappear over and over and over again, so I wanted to get some designs flushed out. For all the other characters, I just kind of make them up on the fly because they're probably never going to be seen again sort of thing. So these are going to be the main cast and crew for Blackbird's era. Some old faces with new designs and some brand new characters with brand new designs. I hope you enjoyed the process of designing characters and coming up with all of the fun little details together. If you have any suggestions, please, I would love to hear them. I love hearing everybody's ideas, but at the end of the day, this is my story. It is very personal, so as long as you guys don't take it personal if I don't take your suggestions, I'm just gonna try and base it as closely off of my own experience as possible, but if you make a really cool idea, it might slip in there, you never know. I'm so excited to start on Blackbird's era very soon. We have a couple more years to go with Wild Child, and then we'll be going onwards into angry preteen bird era. Strap in, folks, it's gonna be a wild ride, and I don't even mean the wild child kind of ride, I mean wild <laughs> ride. Thanks so much for watching, thanks so much for your support, and we'll see you in the next video.